Hello, my friends. As you can see from this hat show print, this summer I made my debut appearance on the Grand Old Opry. It was my first appearance on the Opry in my 40-year career, and I enjoyed every second of it. Now, several of my buddies who had played the Opry told me that you never forget your Opry debut. It's something that sort of sticks with you. And I do believe that for the rest of my life, I will always hold the feelings and the, and the memories of that night with me and carry them with me. Now, when I pulled in that day to the backstage area, I parked in the normal parking lot and the security uh, person come, came out and said, are you Jason Ringenberg? I said, yes. And, and, uh, he said, well, we have, we have a special parking place for you. And he pointed to the parking place. It was right beside the, the, the backstage door. And in this parking space <laughs> on the post there and for the parking spot, they had this beautiful metal sign, Reserve Jason Rainberg Grand Ole Opry, debut June 4th, 2021. And they gave me this sign as a gift that night. That was the first of many gifts I was to receive that evening. The first thing that struck me when I walked into the building was that everyone was so chill. They were so laid back. There was no drama. There was, there was no stress. Everyone was just doing their, their job and enjoying it. A lot of smiles, a lot of jokes, a lot of laughing. And the amazing thing about that is, is that they're doing these shows every time without a rehearsal. <laughs> they don't do a run-through of the show. This is a, a show presented around the world in multi-formats on a regular basis, and they don't do a run-through. You know, the musicians, if you're using the opera band, might sit down a little bit before the show in, a, in the backstage area and sort of run through the songs acoustically. I did that with, with the opera band myself. But there's no run through of the show. It's an amazing thing. Now, speaking of the band, the drummer for the Opry Band that night was Mark Beckett, uh, who is Barry Beckett's son. Barry Beckett, of course, is the legendary uh, keyboard player for the Muscle Shoals Rhythm Section and the producer of Jason and the Scorchers' Thunder and Fire record. So, me and Mark had great talks about had a great talk about his dad and, and shared memories of his father. And there was a lot of that sort of thing that went on that night. A lot of great conversations. I knew some of the folks that were part of the, the production team. When the show started, my set was sort of in the middle. And, and you, know, you, you know, I knew exactly how many minutes I had. And I had the songs picked out, et cetera, of course. And Charlie Matos was the MC. Charlie is the a producer of the Coffee Country and Cody radio show on WSM, which I've done many times. And I... I just love Bill and Charlie's show. It's an amazing show. So I knew that Charlie was going to, he was going to do a, an excellent job. And I knew that he would, you know, he would treat me right. And he did. Um, as my, as my time approached, I, I didn't get stage fright. I don't know really what stage fright even is. I never have had stage fright. I love performing for people and I love the whole act of performance. So I don't, I don't know what stage fright is. But I did, as my time approached, uh, I, I had sort of a, a very positive edge. <laughs> you know, I, I felt a real energy sort of bubbling up. And when Charlie did a spin-up for me, he did a really nice introduction for me. And when he, you know, when he brought me out, the band kicked in to, you know, John the Baptist was a real humdinger. They were hitting that riff just perfectly, a perfect groove right from the start, perfect. And it just felt like I was on a cloud. <laughs> you know? it, it, was, it, it just it felt so perfect. The, I could see the audience, you know, the way the lights were in the, in the room. I could actually see most of the audience. And it's a big crowd. And, you know, I had that big opera set behind me, and this wonderful band just rocking out. And we got through John the Baptist was a real humdinger. It was, it was as good as that song ever sounded. And then, you know, I talked a little bit about what it meant to me to be there and that I was glad that it took 40 years for me to get on the Opry. 
because my kids could see it as adults and understand what was happening to their father. You know, uh, Addie and Camille, two of my daughters, were there actually in the room that night. So it just made it all the more special. We kicked in to keep that promise, the first single from from the Rhinestone record. And the band, boy, they were chugging a perfect groove. That's they they were just nailing it. It was a great country rock groove. And when we hit the harp so the harmonica break, I have to say I was in that circle. And that was a circle that the wood was taken from the original stage at the at the Ryman, where all those legendary performers did their Opry sets. And it just felt like it felt like I was dancing on air. It just felt like my feet weren't on the ground. You know, it was it was a truly amazing experience, one that I'll never forget. Uh, so now we're gonna we're gonna play the you know the performance for you. Uh, the performance was you know it's a bit low tech. Uh, my it was done on phones. My wife took uh, the first. Uh, Susie took the first. Uh, the first did the first song. Uh, John the Baptist was a real humdinger, and then a friend of mine was there. Luckily that night and filming it on his phone. Uh, Roger Trimble, uh, he filmed it and he did. We're gonna use his version of "Keep That Promise Now." And uh, thanks to Roger and to Janet Trimble uh, for helping transfer the files to us and helping us make this happen so everybody could see it. Um, so here it is, folks. <laughs> My debut appearance on the Grand Ole Opry. Called by many the godfather of Americana music. In fact, he is the recipient of the, American music Asso the Americana Music Association's Lifetime Achievement Award with his band, The Scorchers. It's going to be so cool to have him on the Opry stage. He's got a great new album out called Rhinestone, making his Opry debut. Would you welcome Jason Ringenberg? <laughs>
the Empire Town. But he stood up for the truth and gave away his fame and youth. Simply to prepare the way for all the souls his cousin was saved. Thank you. 